dear learners today we shall be discussing about the economies of scale along with economies there is another term diseconomies so these why do these economies and diseconomies of scale take place these economies take place because of the scale and diseconomies also take place because of the scale now what is this scale the scale is the level of output say initially when the production is started then at that stage what happens is that number of units being less the costs remain higher and as the production increases the cost per unit also declines and as a result what happens is that the average cost declines in the long run and once it has reached the low level beyond that also this level is known as the optimum level of output beyond this level also if the output is carried on then the average cost rises and the moment average cost starts rising diseconomies of scale start taking place so this is what that we are going to discuss today in today's lecture behavior of long run average cost curve and long run marginal cost curve it denotes a fall with increase in output so as whenever the output increases there is a fall in lac and there is a fall in lmc we have added word l uh, before ac and similarly l word has been added before mc it makes it lac that means long run average cost curve and lmc means long run marginal cost curve they denote a fall <coughs> with increase in output so as the output increases the lac and lmc fall down and beyond the point of optimum both curves rise because it's rather natural that once the economy the scale have been exhausted then the curves start rising and diseconomies start taking place now the question arises as to why do these curves tend to rise after a particular point that is the level of output and the issue is that these curves fall because of the economies of scale and beyond the optimum rise because of this economies of scale economies refer to cost savings and diseconomies refer to escalation of costs because initially you cannot enjoy the cost savings unless you increase the output many factors are indivisible say machine is indivisible labor is also indivisible so the cost of labor is being paid full cost full cost to machine is being paid when full cost of all these items is being paid and output is very low so economies cannot take place now once the output increases these uh inputs will also start giving their fuller benefits and that is what is known as the cost saving and these diseconomies start because of escalation of cost this escalation of cost also happens because we cross the point of optimum once the point of optimum is crossed the uh, diseconomies start taking place then what are the reasons of increase or decrease in cost because of which reasons these increases take place or these decreases take place if we look at these increases and decreases then we find that increase refers to diseconomies and decrease refers to economies because whenever there is a decrease in cost that means there are economies and when there whenever there is an increase in cost it means there are diseconomies so these economies arise because of cost advantages these are not available at lower level of output and disappear beyond the optimum level of output it's rather very simple that in the initial stages it is not possible to take advantage but once the output increases we start taking advantage we start getting the advantage and if we go beyond the point of optimum then that advantage disappears and disadvantages start happening and that is the diseconomies of the scale 
cost reducing factors arise both inside and outside the firm now these factors which reduce the cost they are from within the firm and even outside the firm from within the firm means there are so many factors which can be taken care of inside the firm these are the inside factors and outside factors are the outside parties which interact with the uh, with the producing firm those factors also influence the economies and diseconomies so accordingly we can divide the economies of scale into two groups one is internal economies other one is external economy so what are the internal economies internal economies means those economies which are internal to the structure of the company and external means those which are outside the company outside the scope of the company if we take the internal economies then these economies arise within the firm due to increase in output unless we have a certain level of output these economies will not start taking place so they arise because the firm starts increasing its output as the output is increased these internal economies start taking place these are available only to an expanding firm a firm which is an expanding firm like which is going on increasing its production going on increasing its output that firm may enjoy the benefits of internal economies it may amount to expansion that is addition of plant or new marketing mix or diversified production or maybe the marketing techniques so benefit of one or many of these techniques will lead to this advantage all such economies are internal there is nothing related to outside the company it is all within the company it's all within the firm these internal economies are actually known as the real economies because these arise internally by increasing the output when you increase the output these economies start happening now if we classify these economies then what we get to know is that these are the economies with regard to production economies with regard to marketing and when we say marketing that means buying inputs and selling outputs then it with regard to managerial economies then with regard to economies in transportation and storage these are the different areas in which internal economies may appear production that has its own economies then marketing it has its own economies when you are a big marketer then you can take advantage of everything in the market simply managerial economies similarly managerial economies the managerial economies means the managerial staff the supervisory staff and the intermediary staff all these people have to be there whether you produce 10 units or you produce 200 units so when you produce 10 units you don't get these benefits and when you produce 200 units you start getting the benefit of managerial economies similarly transportation and storage it also amounts to a huge expenditure and big firms if you remember they have their own transportation arrangements also like some of the courier companies like blue dart it has its own aircraft to take the postage from one city to another at least between the major cities it does that so transportation is not you, you need not to be dependent on the external agency to supply the transport to you rather you can have your own transport and not only that if you engage with an outsider there also you are in a commanding position you are in a bargaining position so this is how these internal economies appear now if we take the economies of production then in production what happens is that these economies can be classified as technical and labor there are some technical economies which can be taken advantage of and there are labor economies also what are these technical economies these are use of specialized and sophisticated technology with higher level of output this was not possible otherwise if you produce at a lower level then specialized and sophisticated technology will not be available to you and higher level of output will also not be there 
so these technical economies will be available only when it happens that is the level it is increased then indivisibility of machinery see machinery is not for one item only it is for producing a certain number of items so if you produce less then you don't get the advantage and machinery is not divisible that you can take advantage of one unit of machinery no it's not that the entire machinery will operate and whatever units of production you take choice of but the indivisibility is there it cannot be done away with so this is second technical uh, issue then one time cost of large setup if if output is at a higher level then huge and large technical setup supported by computers and mach automatic machines can be established and if that is established it simply means that there will be an advantage to the producing firm then a scope for reserve capacity the reserve capacity can also be built up and that reserve capacity is very important in the times of need large scale inventory inventory involves huge amounts in output purchasing the inventory while purchasing you take advantage of this and while uh, storing the inventory once again you need to have the business at a larger level if the business is at a output is at a very lower level then you cannot take advantage of large scale inventory large scale inventory means buying in bulk quantities and when you buy in bulk quantities then you get the advantages from in in terms of discounts in terms of other benefits in terms of maybe transport also in certain cases then if you take this technical then what we do get to know that these advantages are available to us in terms of different processes of production say in the case of a cotton mill there can be spinning weaving printing pressing packaging all these steps can be automated but these steps cannot be automated if the output is at a lower level similarly in case of a milk unit you can take different functions like milk processing skimming toning chilling storage packaging all these functions can be taken care of by the automatic machines it is not possible otherwise in the case of a lower level of production so such an arrangement does what it saves time and it saves cost and simultaneously it's very hygienic also because human involvement is not there and the machines perform the work in a very neat and clean manner now it results in higher productivity of capital per unit of time so higher productivity of capital per unit of time that means every minute is being utilized and better productivity is being obtained a small scale firm cannot enjoy these technical advantages these technical economies these technical economies actually lower the average cost and because of these technical economies the uh, average cost comes down it goes on coming down then at a point of optimum it stops and then it starts rising so it becomes a sort of english capital letter u wherein there is a bottom and there are two upper ends same is the shape of the long run average cost curve then if you take the example of labor economies then the labor also gets specialized if the production is carried out at a bigger level you can get the facilities of expert labor people who have specialized in their functions now this kind of advantage tells us about the labor economies now these economies again add up to the productivity of the labor the labor starts producing more and it why does it happen it happens because of division of labor and specialization there is a perfect division of labor everybody knows what is his or her job so everybody is doing his or her job and similarly the specialization has also been built up this specialization helps to lower the cost this division leads to specialization 
and specialization gives us better output in a shorter period of time as a result what happens is that the average cost reduces so when production expands more labor are employed with increased number division and specialization would happen because in if you have lesser number of workers then neither the uh, division will happen because one person will only be performing all the activities and not the specialization will take place so it is very important to increase the output when the output increases these labor economies start taking place and eventually what happens is that labor's efficiency and labor's productivity both increase and which in turn means cost of production is being reduced so these are the labor economies so we notice that there is one these are the internal economies one is technical economies technical economies relate to output technical economies relate to production then there are labor economies then there are marketing economies while marketing your output you can have a large number of advantages if the operations are being carried out at a bigger scale large scale purchase of raw material is possible with output at a higher level even our inputs those can also be bought at a lower price because the firm is buying in large numbers wherever there is a scale is large these advantages start coming automatically now bulk purchases mean bigger discounts heavier discounts like we as buyers when we buy during festival period then what happens is that sellers are able to sell a lot during the festival period as a result they reduce their prices give some very attractive discounts so this if this is available to an individual consumer then how about a big producing firm of course they can dictate their own terms for getting the inputs then large scale selling advantages are also there like advertisement can be issued at a very big level which cannot be issued at a small level similarly distribute advantage of distribution channels can also be taken low per unit cost of selling expenses happens as a result of all these efforts you can try new marketing mix you can try new and diversified products all this put together creates marketing economies and these marketing economies reduce the cost of production and when the cost of production is reduced long run average cost curve comes down and beyond the point of optimum of course it has to increase if we take the managerial economies these are also the internal economies internal economy is available to a firm as i said earlier the managerial staff has to be appointed maybe less or maybe more in the initial stages you may have a lesser number of managerial staff so one person performs every function one person is the accountant one person is the manager one person same one person is doing all the functions but when the operation and output is carried out at a bigger scale then what happens is that you have separate accountants you have management cadre you have supervisors you have support staff then once again as it happens with labor same happens with managerial staff that their uh, division of labor starts taking place and specialization also happens now efficiencies ultimately appear and when efficiency is appear that means costs are being reduced and we know as with the machines they are also indivisible similarly the managerial staff is also indivisible whether you produce 10 units whether you produce 20 units or whether you produce 100 units so advanced means of communication can be used quick decision making is possible all these factors lead to the managerial economies which help in reducing the cost then transportation and storage economies as i said a little earlier transportation or logistic arrangement 
is a big issue for today's industries. Now, if they have their own transport, obviously they must be a big firm, unless uh, the firm is big enough. Firm cannot have its own transport system. It's not possible. Similarly, it can have its, its own storage, uh, other arrangements, they are also possible. But otherwise, what we have is there, we have, you have delays, you have, you have uh, the dependence on the others. So these are the problems with the lower level of output. But with the upper level of output, transportation expenses can be managed. And what happens is that you can have your own transport, you can have arrangement with the other providers, delays can be avoided. Even the courier companies have their own aircrafts, they, have, they can have own railway racks and the, these racks uh, carry their material. They do not have to waste too much of time on these activities and there is better management of storage of raw material and finished goods. That is also possible. These were the internal economies. So we notice that is it internal economies are technical economies, that is the economies in production, then even in finance, even in finance there are many advantages which can be taken care of, which are available to the firm if the firm operates at a larger level. So on one hand we have the internal economies and on the other we have the external economies and these benefits arise outside the firm. Large discounts on raw material, advertisements can be had. A special individualized deals in getting finances are there. Transport or warehouse deals and discounts are there. Ancillary industries also develop along with the mother industry and these ancillary industries uh, produce the inputs, input components for the bigger firm, firm and these are available at a lower cost at a lesser cost and as a result the overall cost structure of the company concerned is rationalized and cost reduces. Like for example tire manufacturers for automobile companies are the ancillary industry of automobiles. Wherever there is some automobile industry and if the tire manufacturing also takes place in some another unit those tires can be fitted into the vehicles which are being manufactured into the mother unit, the bigger unit. So an ancillary unit and a bigger unit both can survive. Then these were the economies. So when there are economies, the curve falls down. Long run average cost curve falls down. And when there are diseconomies, then what happens? this long run average cost curve starts rising. So diseconomies that operate beyond the optimum, there is a point of optimum. Optimum means output where you get the maximum economies. And when there are maximum economies, that means cost is lowest. And cost is lowest means the profit is the highest. But because of business requirements, because of expansion requirements, production is expanded beyond that point also. A firm cannot usually stop here. It has to go up. So once it goes up, the diseconomies start taking place. And these economies may again be due to internal factors and due to external factors. Internal factors arise within the firm and external factors arise outside the firm. In internal factors, there may be managerial and labor diseconomies, regular contact and connect weekends. Whatever the contact and connect we had earlier, now that contact and connect is not there because there has been some sort of crowding in the firm. When there is crowding inside the firm, many people have been appointed, then the efficiencies start disappearing. Close control and supervision gets replaced by remote control supervision. When the unit grows, individualized and personal attention is not there. 
and then what what happens is that remote control kind of administration takes place then decision making becomes complex and time taking the entire decision making process becomes complex and it becomes time taking owner's objective of profit maximization this again is replaced by manager's utility function and what is the manager's utility function that they are interested in their job security they are interested in their increments they are interested in targets and in satisfying functions only not going beyond that that loyalty is the paper loyalty and not the real loyalty on part of the managers so these are the managerial diseconomies which start taking place after the point of optimum and once the diseconomies start that simply means that cost will rise then there are labor inefficiencies once again for labor also the same logic applies there is overcrowding there is loss of control there is reduced productivity there is lower accountability there is labor unionism and rise in cost of production see all these factors put together will give a rise to cost of production like overcrowding when there are so many people then everybody can shirk the work and believe that somebody else will do it but why will somebody else will do it why not you but then there is a tendency to shift it to others loss of control loss of control takes place the management cannot take control of the labor because their number is larger so some supervisor is taking care of and that supervisor also gets lax with the larger numbers similarly reduced productivity starts coming up accountability gets lessening accountability becomes less and less labor unionism starts this politics in business in the form of labor unionism has done the maximum damage of course labor should not be exploited management has no right to exploit the labor and labor also have a right to raise their voice but the term unionism refers to sometimes adamance on part of labor and that adamance cannot be accepted by the business and as a result there is loss of production so what happens is the cost of production rises these are the labor inefficiencies or diseconomies so in all what happens is that the there are efficiencies with regard to there are inefficiencies with regard to production there are inefficiencies with regard to managerial aspects there there are inefficiencies with regard to labor and all these inefficiencies put together give a rise to they give a rise to the cost of production cost of production rises and the curve starts rising upwards now if we sum up the these diseconomies then origin these diseconomies originate outside the firm that is in input markets natural constraints that is especially in agriculture and mining these are there because in agriculture what happens that if you go on producing uh, then its output starts declining the land becomes less fertile and mining in the case of a mine if you go on doing the continuing with querying then what happens that after a certain period of time the depletion starts happening and the losses start and when all the firms in a industry expand then concessions and discounts are shared and reduced because now all the firms are increasing yours is not the only firm the other firms will also take advantage of it then increasing demand for inputs raises input prices similarly excessive use of fixed factors make the law of diminishing returns to apply and now lac starts moving upwards so today we discussed the economies and diseconomies of scale and in these economies and diseconomies of scale we noticed that there are internal economies and there are external economies similarly there are internal in the economies and internal uh, external diseconomies 
so a balance has to be stricken and then only the maximum advantage can be secured by the business thank you very much